Here we have a full wave rectifier using a center tap transformer. And the advantage of using this kind of a circuit is that it only takes two diodes to, to make the device operate. The disadvantage being that now we have to take the secondary voltage on our transformer and divide it by two so we don't get a, the, the peaks that we would, would optimally like to see. And the way this circuit would work, it's going to take a sine wave coming in. So if we start with the positive part of the alternation, so we're going to start with this this part and just set the circuit up like like this, negative at the bottom. And this part portion is going to be more positive than this and compared to this potential, this one is going to be more negative. And what this will tell us is which diode is going to operate. So we're going to look at the top diode as being the functioning one. Current's going to flow from the negative portion of the of the alternation, so it's going to go into our connection here. And these are electrically connected points. It's just a reference. And current will flow through the resistor, flowing negative to positive. It will come out of the resistor and then go into our forward bias diode, and then through it. And so we have and so we have on the resistor the positive alternation of our of our sine wave. On the next alternation we're not going to take the the negative and negative will go here and positive will go here and of course this point will be more negative than this but this point will be more positive than this one. And again we look for which diode is going to be forward by so it looks like it's going to be the lower one now. Current will flow from the negative part of the the transformer through the our load resistor flowing negative to positive out of our load resistor into our diode or through our diode and back to the source and that gives us this positive alternation. Notice that now for one sine wave coming in we actually have two pulses coming out so the frequency in a full wave device is is doubled. This allows us when we close the switch and put the rectifier we don't have to wait as long for the charging pulse. If you recall on a half wave rectifier there was a, a dead spot here so the capacitor was allowed to discharge a little bit farther before the next charging pulse came in. With the full wave circuit and twice as many charging pulses the, the DC voltage will become much flatter and more stable at the output. So here's the circuit that I'm going to be testing shortly. And as always, we start by taking whatever RMS voltage we've got coming into our circuit and converting it to peak because the capacitor will charge to the peak and the calculations are, are all derived from the peak value. So we take that uh, 80 volts and multiply it by the 1.414 and this will give us as an output 113.12 volts peak and that's on the primary. Go through this transformer and I characterized mine a while ago and it came out to be uh, 4.85 to 1 and using those numbers we plug it in and we say all right well the number of turns on the secondary is going to be 1 and the primary is, is 4.85, so this is going to be a step-down transformer. Multiply it by the voltage peak of 113.12, and our secondary voltage is going to be 23.32 volts on the secondary. To find out what the working voltage is, the voltage that's actually left on the resistor and the capacitor, remember we have to take half we're only using one diode section at a time, so we're either using this upper section or this lower section. So we take that entire secondary voltage, which is 23.32 volts from top to bottom, and we cut that in half, and then we have to subtract 0.7 because one of these diodes is going to conduct. And that'll leave us a value of 
nine, six for the volts working. And the next step, we just take Ohm's law. We take that volts working and divide it by RL, and that's going to give us the, the peak current that we have, 16.12 volts, or sorry, 16.12 milliamps. To get the average or the DC voltage, remember now we have two peaks that are going to be on this resistor. We're going to have two peaks, both of which are going to be at an amplitude of 10.96. So we take 2 times that 10.96 and divide it by pi, and we should come up with 6.98 volts DC when we measure this on our, on our multimeter. The current is, again, Ohm's law, just 6.98 divided by 680, and we're looking at uh, 10.15 milliamps. And finally, the frequency out is 2 times the frequency in, and you saw why that was. It took uh, one entire sine wave, one alternation here, or one cycle here, and we, got two positive, and we got two positive pulses here. So the frequency was twice as high, so we're looking at 120 hertz. In this circuit, I'm going to close the switch, and we're going to be using the capacitor for filtering. The original part of the equation will stay exactly the same as it was. Uh, nothing's going to change as far as the, the volts peak. So we're still looking at 113.12. We're still going to have the same 23.32 volts on the secondary. And still have the same 10.96 volts working. Uh, the current, of course, is going to stay the same, the peak current, 16.12 milliamps. But now we have a ripple voltage that we have to figure into this circuit. And just plugging it in, but you remember that this frequency now is 120 hertz, because what we're looking at is the frequency that the capacitor is actually going to be charged at. So that's that 120. So we've got that 1 times, uh, per, you know, open the parentheses, 120 times the 680 times the 47 micro, close the parentheses, take the reciprocal of that, volts working, and you will get 2.86 volts. And I'm just going to cut that in half right now, which will give me 1.43 volts as an average of, of this. So taking that volts working and, and half of that ripple, which is this value here, we know that it's 10.96 minus one half of that 2.86. And we'll end up with 9.53 volts for DC. And so the voltage went up quite a bit. And our current is going to go up commensurately, 14.71 milliamps. And our frequency is still that 120 hertz. We've already discussed that. So now let's see if these calculations bear out in an actual circuit. And remember that if you're within 10% of the actual answers, you're, you're doing well because the, the components, they're not going to be a perfect... 680 ohms, you're not going to have a perfect 47 microfarad, and these diode voltage drops are going to vary around that 0.7 average that we had. The only thing that I'm fairly certain of is that the, the transformer turns ratio is correct, because like I said, I, I characterized that earlier. And of course, the input voltage, I've, I've set uh, to as much accuracy as I, as I could or, or as needed for this example. Here's the ridge rectifier with the center tap transformer. And one of the things that I want to point out is that when you're using this center tap transformer, uh, the symbol in the circuitry shows a ground reference point or a, or a common reference point. And many people get this confused and they think they actually have to hook up an earth ground. The ground or is actually just a reference point. It's this center conductor and it acts as the return path for the circuit. So this is the reference point. This is that ground point. You can see that in the, in the image on, on the top. So this is one connection to one of the diodes. Yeah, this is the connection to the 
to the other diode, and this is actually that ground reference point for the entire circuit. And I've left a space here to install the capacitor to give you the uh, the image of the of the rectified output. Here's the hookup for the from the test that I'm going to run on the this rectifier, and I've got channel one hooked up to measure the entire waveform coming into my rectifier and then channel 2 is going to look at the at the output and this is what you should, what you should see the yellow trace is my my rectified output and the red trace is the entire input and the little distortions that you see in this sine wave those are caused by all of the inductance in in my my variac and the transformers and it's probably some introduced in the board as well and if we look at the at the output on channel 2 and you can see that we currently have it set to 5 volts per division and we're looking at about 11 volts which was about what we expected we were looking at 10.96 and we really can't get that accurate we can increase the scale slightly to 2 volts per division and again this is our zero so we're looking at one two three four five and again about 11 volts per division and notice that we have 23 volts uh, peak on our on our input now let's take some some DC measurements and see how accurate our our calculations were our estimate for our DC output was uh, 6.98 volts for the unfiltered circuit and when we measure across our resistor we come up with uh, 6.69 so about 6.7 and again that's well within our our 10 percent tolerance and it looks like we have a, a good circuit now let's go ahead and add the the filter and see what the ripple looks like on the scope as well as the DC voltage Here's the output of the center tap full wave rectifier with the filter. You can see we're, we're at 9.62 volts, which compares favorably to the 9.53 we should have out. So it's a little bit more DC voltage. And the ripple voltage is 2.8 volts. And that's extremely close to the value we should have had of 2.86. And you can see the, here's my DC ground level. And you can see the, the DC voltage is up here. And this is the, uh, the slight amount of ripple coming out at 120 hertz. If I wanted to isolate that and get that uh, measurement a little bit more closely, I would have to take my scope into AC coupling. And now I can increase the sensitivity of the scope until I have some stable display and adjust the trigger. and make a more accurate measurement and it's still coming out to using the letting the scope do the do the math and the calculations for me at uh, 2.72 so this circuit compares favorably to the calculations that we did and you're going to see these outputs these ripples and output voltages vary considerably based on what the mains line voltage is 120 is the nominal value and the it's allowed to vary from that nominal by roughly plus or minus 12 volts so if you have 108 volts rms come out of the mains to 132 it's considered to be in intolerance and of course that big variation that 10 percent variation is going to give you a 10 percent variation in the output voltage nevertheless the calculations that we did for the circuit seem to bear out in the real world and now we can move on to the bridge rectifier